Isaiah. Now, what about holiness? Does holiness mean that we should be afraid of him? Does holiness mean that we should be afraid of God? And when God's holiness comes, is there like this fear that comes? Uh, By the way, what does the Bible say? The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But how many of us have been taught that the fear of God doesn't really mean fear of God. It means that you reverence God. You God is awesome, and the, the fear of God doesn't really mean fear. It means reverence. And I just want to tell you that the fear of God means the fear of God. The fear of God, okay? The terror of God. Now, by the way, does the notion of the fear of God also mean reverence and respect? Yes, it does. And it also means obedience and things. And actually, I've, been work, I've worked on that concept. I actually just did a paper uh, last November on the fear of God, uh, and things, and so it's an interesting concept. Part of the fear of God is, is this notion of fear. Um, how many of you fear? Are there certain individuals that cause fear? Um, you're traveling down the road. All of a sudden, the man pulls up in back of you. He's got a set of lights across the top of his car, and you have no clue how fast you're going. Question: Fear? Okay. Um, I experienced this this last weekend. My son was flying out from Logan Airport out to Denver to visit my other son, and they're going to go elk hunting, okay? And so I have a, a gun called a 30 odd 6, and it's in a case. And so my son and I went down. We took him down. It was, I don't know, 9. His plane was at 9.20, so we're down there about 8.30 or so. And so my son and I walk up, and I take my, my gun case and stuff and stuff. He's going to go out, and so he has a gun from, from my other son in Denver who scoped out all the elk and all that kind of stuff. So we put the gun case on. They're going to, what are you, check luggage, right? So it's going to go through. Um, apparently, you have to declare that you're flying with the gun. And I didn't, to be honest with you, I didn't know the laws. And my son uh, didn't know the laws either. And so they took the gun case and things. And then my wife and I went home. And so he was supposed to be getting on this airplane and stuff. All of a sudden, about uh, what was this? About nine o'clock, we get this phone call from my son saying, uh, "Dad, uh, uh, how do you get this case open? They want me to open this case." I said, "What do you mean open this case?" He said, "They pulled him aside just before he's supposed to fly out. They pulled him aside and forced him to open the case." I said, "Well, I gave you the key to it and stuff." He says, "Yeah, but the key won't work." And I, so I told him how it's this special thing—you got a monkey with a key. So I got a monkey with a key. So he says, "Okay, I got it. I got it." So then he hangs up and stuff. About 10 minutes later, he calls up again. He says, okay, now how do I lock this thing? And I says, okay, well, you just you go back. you got to get in the right way. And yeah, you got to feel it a little bit. And I said, don't snap the key or you're done and stuff. So then he, all of a sudden he goes and he calls back. Meanwhile, my wife is freaking because she realizes he's got pull, pulled aside. For flying with a weapon without declaring it is a, is a felony, is a federal felony. My wife is freaking out. And she's getting like sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. And it's like, I can't believe you let him go without that. You didn't tell your son what you did. I said, I know where you're, I didn't know you're supposed to declare it. Meanwhile, my other son calls up and he starts screaming. He never screamed to me in life. He says, Dan, I can't believe you're, anyways. And he goes off on me and says, you better get your tail down there. Your son is being hauled off to jail right now and he's going to need your help. You better get back down there. And I said, oh, okay, I better get back down there. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zach then calls my sister, my daughter, who's married to a top lawyer, um, and my, my, my son-in-law now, who's a lawyer, tells Zach that he knew a friend who carried on a thing without declaring as well, and he was put in prison for two years. And the guy that was put in prison was a lawyer. So now all of a sudden, we jump in the car, we're going down there, and, and Robert's calling, he's got a good lawyer friend in, in Boston, and this is like 11 o'clock at night, and he's saying, this is going to cost you thousands of dollars, and you still may end up in jail, because I'm not sure I can get this done. So he's calling up his lawyer friend, we're going down there. Question, was there fear in me? I'm going down there realizing it's my gun. Is it possible Gordon College prof sits in jail for for, for an authorized weapon to his son and stuff? And I said, man, I prayed for this kid for like seven months when he was over in Afghanistan. He was getting shot at every day. God brings him back to America. And when he gets back in America, they put him in jail. You know, so so anyways, I'm freaking out and going down. But question, was there fear? Now what question? Was there fear of the law of the of a police? Have you guys ever had a fear of a police? Okay, yeah, so there was real fear. Now you say, that doesn't mean that life with God. 
The police can put me in jail. Does God have power to do other things beyond that? Okay, and so I'm saying is, uh, yeah, and so the fear of God, you need to think about that. I know we're in a no-fear culture kind of thing, but what I'm saying is, you need to think about that. And uh, by the way, my son, got, I actually met the guy that interviewed my son. I, I came down there, I said, uh, excuse me, can you, anybody tell me here whether uh, Elliot Hillebrand got put on a plane and stuff? And, and the guy was going to punch it in the machine. There was another guy kicked back in the thing. He says, yeah, he's on his plane. So then I said, I said what, how do you know? I did, how do you know him? I said, would you memorize all the people on the, on the list of the plane or something? And I was just joking around with the guy because I wanted to make light of this because it was real serious. The guy says, no, no. He says, I only know the names of those the guys that are trying to carry on firearms. And I said, okay. So I was back to, did, did he talk his way out of it? Apparently he talked his way out of it and the guy gave him a break and so he didn't report him because otherwise uh, it would have been real serious. So question, as a parent, yeah, yeah, I know never to do that again. Anyway, it's okay. So, anyway, it's okay. Fear and dread of God. Fear of dread of God. Isaiah is standing before God, and God is up in the heavens, and these angels are winging around God saying what? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Isaiah looks at a holy God, seeing these, these seraphim, cherubim type things going around with six wings flapping and saying holy, holy, holy. And what happens? Isaiah feels what? I am a man of what? Unclean lips and dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. He feels his own shame in front of a presence of a holy God. God, the angel then takes a thing, a coal, puts it on his lips, and burns and like purifies him and says, Isaiah, you're my man. And this is Isaiah 6 is the call of Isaiah where the angel says, and then God comes and basically says to Isaiah, you're going to speak for this holy God that you saw. You're going to speak for this holy God. You're going to be a prophet, Isaiah and you're going to speak God's word. So a lot of the book of Isaiah is about holiness because Isaiah saw God in his holiness and, and, and then felt this kind of like tension between himself and God uh, with, with this holiness kind of thing. Now, 